Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul, and I am honored to be a master teacher of Dr. and Master Shah. I'm here today. It is February 27th. It is a Monday after a full weekend in which last week we utilized the wisdom associated with forgiveness. We used it to empower us in four separate days. On Monday, we used the power of forgiveness in relationship to serving ourselves. We had our own blockages, and sometimes we say negative things to self. We used the power of forgiveness to deal with that. On Tuesday, we used the power of forgiveness to bring healing and blessing to us in relationship to the um, relations that we have. And we used forgiveness to bring blessings to one of our relationships. On Wednesday, we used the power of forgiveness regarding our finances and success. And on Thursday, we used it for health, including physical, emotional, and mental health. Okay. And so I'm using the live stream on um, right now on the uh, computer, and I'm unable to tell actually if it's working or if I'm live, and I cannot see any responses. So I'm having to go to my telephone to see if anything is showing up live. Ah, there we start to see some people. Okay, aloha, dog on in, everybody. So thank you for joining me. So for those that are new that are just checking in, wondering what this live stream is about, uh, my name is Master Paul. I have been doing live streams for almost a year now, nine months apparently, and I have been uh, focusing on how I can share with you the wisdom, teachings, and blessings from uh, Dr. and Master Shah. Um, and he brings the power and significance and the wisdom that comes from the source, the Tao. And he makes no claim as to the efficacy. He just says, if you want to know if a pear is sweet, try it, taste it. And so uh, what he has taught me is how I can share with you how to bring blessings into your life, to bring balance into your life, into the various areas of our life where we tend to have imbalances, including our emotions, our mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, sometimes our finances, sometimes our relationship, sometimes how we treat ourselves. And the soul wisdom, the Tao wisdom that Master Shah has brought forth to humanity has been put in over 20 books, uh, 11 of which have reached New York Times bestsellers. And so um, it's fair to say that this wisdom is very appreciated by Master Shah and by all of those who have been following his wisdom and teachings. Um, I want to share with you that today we're going to be focusing on anger. And anger can impact us in many different ways in our life. Anger has uh, some very deep roots. It can impact us in our physical body. It can create heart attacks. It can has a direct association, which you'll learn later today, on the liver. You know, how many angry people have liver problems? How many people with liver problems have anger? You know, alcoholism and whatnot. So there's uh, direct associations, literally, um, that has been documented for well over 5,000 years from the Eastern medical perspective. So I'll be sharing with you some of that wisdom as well uh, from one of Master Shah's books. And then we're going to take a look at how it can be released through the power of soul, through the power and the wisdom of the Tao. So first I want to acknowledge some of those that have joined here today. So welcome Dana, welcome Linda, welcome Michelle, welcome Nina, uh, welcome Linda Jansen, welcome Christine Loti and CJ. Welcome Lori and welcome Elizabeth. So it's curious, I'm working off of a new platform. Facebook has, uh, has opened up their live platform off of a computer. And uh, as far as I can tell, it's a bit weak. <laughs> I, I'm only able to scroll back uh, 10 people. It won't let me see more than 10 people, which is a bit curious. And it also uh, won't let me um, uh, do a couple of things that the phone does. So we're going to find out. Normally right about now we have about 15 or 20 people, so I'm not sure that it's working the same. And either way, I have to stay focused on serving you. So uh, I want to first connect heart to heart, soul to soul, and thank you all for joining. We're going to place our hands in the Soul Light Soul Service hand position. Dropping our left hand in front of the heart center, right hand gently pointed towards heaven. We close our eyes and we're going to connect 
They're all beings of light serving the plan of the light side, including all lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, masters and ascended masters, beloved angels, healing angels and archangels, our beloved divine creator, our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels and saints. We love you, we honor you, we appreciate you. We are deeply honored for this opportunity to serve you, and we're deeply honored for this honor to receive your service and blessings. We ask for your presence today, and we ask that you come to sit in our heart centers to guide this blessing, this wisdom, this practice. We ask the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls and all universes to please be with us, to assist in whatever way is appropriate to create love, peace, and harmony in our soul and in other souls. Please offer blessings as appropriate to release the blockages associated with anger. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let us chant together. For everybody new that might tune into this later on, please just receive the blessing. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo shin erling. Wo ai tran ren ling. Wong ling rong er mu shir shang. Song I ping on a se. Song I ping on a se. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, la, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo shin her ling. Wo ai tran ran lei. Wang li hing rong her mu shir shang. Shang ai ping on a se. Song I ping on a sing. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace. And harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you for joining. Uh, today I'm operating on a new platform. Facebook has made it possible for going live uh, through their web page on a computer. So, I thought I'd experiment with it today. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, there was no way to test the ability to hear me other than going live. <clears throat> so I'm sure you'll let me know if you can and if it's clear enough. Uh, so I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, uh, Robrett. Welcome, Lori. Welcome, Elizabeth. <coughs> welcome, CJ. And uh, welcome, Kristen Strachan. Welcome, Susan. Welcome, Zilke. And also, Johnny. Welcome, uh, Monica. So thank you all for joining. Today's subject is on the subject of anger. And... One of the things that challenges our anger is the ego. Um, the ego is actually probably the main culprit for it in many, many cases. And I'll, I'll share with you some insights that I have learned from being an angry person and from over the course of time um, learning 
A, how to release it, uh, B, how to control it if it does show up, and C, what are the spiritual wisdom and teachings that can best assist us with releasing it. Anger uh, uh, lands on our mental emotional bodies. It can absolutely impact our physical body. It is in many cases karmic, and in other words, it has a root cause. And one of the first and key things to understand about the condition of anger is that it tends to show up when we least want it to. And we tend to spend quite a bit of time uh, fixing it afterwards. For some of us, we express anger because it is a way of feeling better. It's a way of releasing the pent-up irritation and frustration that is welling up for us about any number of things that might be happening in our life. You know, the Buddha says that life is suffering. <clears throat> um, and in many ways it is. Uh, I read a statement from Eckhart Tolle uh, just this morning and I'll paraphrase it. And he basically said that when we, the, the uh, response is what facilitates our emotional condition. So if we choose not to respond that way, our, mo our emotional condition can remain one that we and everyone else can enjoy. The catch is catching it before it comes out. And so this is where the spiritual wisdom comes in. So first I want to give you a little bit of my history regarding this subject matter. So, um, locally here in Honolulu, uh, when I first started with the center, um, I would not say I had anger that anybody else noticed, but in terms of the, uh, my speed, I do everything quickly. And so internally, I would hold frustration and or irritation um, when others did not operate at the same speed. Now, this is my own blockage, but it, is, it was a source of uh, irritation that was self-created. I did not have any leniency or patience or tolerance for other people's way in which they processed. And that could be the processing of emotions, that could be the processing of thoughts, or the processing of actions. It doesn't seem to matter too much. So for, for myself, in order to become a person that is not angry, I've had to go through a series of shifts to, um, to position myself to be a, a loving, conscious um, supportive person regardless of what's happening around me and how that might affect me. So why did it affect me is the first question. Because one, my, my spiritual debt brought about the conditions in my life that made me to be judgmental and critical of others which created this resentment or um, not resentment but um, uh, conditions in which I uh, had irritation or a lack of tolerance. So the, the root causes in almost every case is going to be our spiritual debts. They bring about conditions in which we need to learn and we need to process through whatever that blockage area is that shows up in our life. Uh, I see Kristen talking about noise and buffering. Could be hers. It seems to be working fine on mine and working on a good connection. But one of the things that happens is we all have our own source of irritation. It could be a loud noise. It could be... Um, for some people, children, they just don't like the children uh, screaming and, and having a good time. For some people, it could be heavy metal. Uh, for some people, it could be um, somebody touching them. Literally, physical touch could cause somebody to be angry. Um, the, we have our five senses, seeing something. Oftentimes, we have had experiences that we have pushed down, and then we witness an experience not knowing that we had pushed it down, and we, we just get so angry. Uh, one of my students um, uh, had an uh, anger response to, to one of their loved ones. And um, it was something where from an outsider's perspective, it would be completely uncalled for. You know, why would they raise their voice and, and, and grab the shoulder of that person? Their intention was not to hurt them. Uh, uh, and they, of course, have to go through apologies afterwards, but it just flares up. Well, why? What is the original source? of this kind of a blockage. It is, of course, the spiritual debt. So this means that um, this person had brought harm or suffering to others that had the experience of anger uh, as a result of it. And so for now they have to experience the harm that is caused by it and the results of that harm because people could pull away, people could divorce, people could completely go opposite direction. They could lose love because of anger. And sometimes the suffering needs to occur before they wake up and change and shift. 
It's quite interesting, this subject matter, because uh, most of the time we see, for example, uh, spiritual debt or karma as something that, okay, I have a sore knee, therefore I apologize for hurting people's knees. But with the condition of anger, uh, it comes to us in our field because we have created it in others by our wrong thoughts, words, and actions. So we get to receive uh, doing it, causing it to others. Others might be on the receiving end because they had done it to us, so now they're on the receiving end of that anger. But we are supposed to learn from it in every case. So it's very interesting the way it shows up. Now from a, a uh, Eastern philosophy or Eastern uh, TCM perspective, coming straight out of Master Shah's book, which is Tao Song Tao Dance, on page 54, he goes over what is called the five element theory. And the five element theory, if you can see that well, I'm not sure, um, specifically talks about the wood element, which is the one associated with anger, the fire element, the earth element, the metal element, and the water element. Only today we're going to talk a little bit about the wood element and its association with anger. So it has some paired organs. And so, for example, the yin organ, which is the main uh, paired organ, is associated with the liver. The yang organ is the gallbladder. Okay, yin and yang, they work together. The uh, emotion, of course, as we know, is anger. Um, the tear, excuse me, the, the uh, eyes have associations with the liver, and so do tears in the tear duct. So people with tear duct problems, there's actually a wood imbalance and a liver imbalance associated with the eyes, dry eyes or overly watery eyes, um, or weak eyesight. Okay? Um, the, uh, the balanced emotion to anger is patience. Okay? So there's more information, but that's sufficient. So this wood element, this anger, it has the great possibility of bringing tremendous, tremendous damage into our life. When we go back to myself, when I had anger issues, it was because I had either a perspective that something could or should be done a certain way, possibly I was the victim of something, uh, possibly I had expectations that didn't work out the way I, I planned, therefore I got angry about the expectations not working out. This is what I've been able to observe based on observation. So you have to be vigilant. In order to be patient, you have to first understand what causes the flare-ups. Now those who tend to push our buttons the most are the family members and the loved ones. So spouses, children, um, brothers, sisters, uh, co-workers, they are a, a second layer, but they can bring sor sources of our irritation and resentment up first. So when we look at anger, we have to identify what is, um, what, is, what am I really feeling and what am I really needing? Now I want you to pay attention to this. When you have an angry situation, the ideal thing, if you cannot just close your mouth, is to leave. Just walk away. When you walk away, you have the opportunity to look. At that moment, we want to point outside of ourself. That is rarely, if ever, the case. Um, we have to look inside of ourself. What is it in me that is triggered at this moment? What need do I have that is not being met? Okay, I have a need to be heard right now, and I'm not being heard. Um, I have a need for respect. This was the case with the student who um, was, was being angry in their response to one of their children. And they had, this is my guess, I haven't went into great depth with this, but this is what I've noticed with myself, and I think if you look at it, you'll notice it with yourself, is a lack of respect. So if, for example, you're talking to the child, and the child, hmm, or the child turns his back on you, or the child goes, hmm, what does that do for the parent that responds in anger? It flies up in the face of, you will respect me. I am your elder, I am your peer, I am the boss. Where does this, where does those thoughts come from? They come from what we have been taught and accepted as true. They come from a parent or a peer or a teacher that showed us that perspective, that way of being, and we emulate it. 
They come from a lack of self-esteem. They come from a, a low self-esteem and a lack of self-love. If we have to demand in this example that someone uh, give us their full attention because we are their elder, their peer, their whatever, um, then that means we don't have enough self-love also. So in, in looking back, we cannot look back on whatever that angry situation is until we see it clearly. The spiritual practices uh, that Master Shah has brought to us, using the, the understandings of the wood element, the understandings of the, of the opposite uh, condition of patience, how to release the blockages at the level of the liver, at the level of the anger itself, at the level of mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. We will employ those to help remove some of the root causes. Um, and if you don't have any of this wisdom that I'm sharing with you today, these will still have an exceedingly positive effect. But I share with you this wisdom so that you have more of a clear understanding of how to start going back to that root. Okay? Um, when you take a look at other people being angry at you, Okay? which is going to be the case with at least half the people here. They're going to be the victim. Somebody else will be the victimizer. Okay? Why did that person come into your life? Why are they always angry, especially at you? Okay? There is a spiritual debt there. You want to look at that. What did you do that brought a person into your life that is constantly angry with you? We always have to look at ourself. Uh, I'm going to do a little side note and come back around to this part. Uh, one of the students that I've been working with for a while had a communication with one of her peers and, and she was feeling constantly anger and a constant uh, inability to, to release um, that at the, the level necessary because um, this peer held a position over her and um, she, the position this person held though was supposed to be a a collective position where everyone communicated equally and together and it was supposed to be a, a position where you're only there to oversee things not to order things around and so she had such a grudge about this because she did not feel like her opinions and whatnot were being heard and uh, so she asked me if I would do something about that with this person and communicate with them and so I went to to one of my um, people that I respect and I said this is the condition what's the appropriate response here should I go and share with this person that they need to open their heart and allow other people's perspectives and her my, my peers response was no the problem is not the person above her the problem is her the problem is everything if you point outside of you it doesn't matter it's something that's inside of you that needs to be resolved because if it shows up in that kind of a uh, outside of you, doesn't matter who it is that you're the victim of, that is because it's, it's, it's something that on some level, you and that person have spiritual debt together. You and that person have been in opposite roles together. You and that person have to go through the process of unwinding it at the level of soul, at the level of Tao. And that was not something that I actually wanted to hear either because I had listened to this conversation many times. I agreed with this person, so I wanted to agree with her. But I couldn't deny this truth from this peer. And then I also heard it many times in the retreat I was in by other top teachers. And so we have to look at that from the role of those people that come into our life with anger, including our angry children, our angry teenagers, our angry brothers or sisters, the angry mother-in-law or father-in-law, the angry spouse, Okay, it doesn't matter if somebody is angry at you, a boss, a coworker. the answer and the solution is the same. We have to apply the same wisdom in every case, including to ourselves. And so I see a comment here from Nina. She says, I interpret for people who were assaulted sexually, they are always angry. How do they feel better, especially the kids under age? Okay, very good question. I'll come around to it, Nina, as I go through this. Um, so, one of the things that we want to be able to do is empower ourselves. And we do that, first of all, by looking at what am I feeling and what am I needing. And so whether you're trying to assist yourself or trying to assist another, you have to get them into their feelings and what they're needing. Okay? Once that they can get to those, they can get to a much deeper layer 
of healing. Once you can get to those, you can get to a much deeper layer of healing. Now, there's also the forgiveness that can occur at these layers. Because if you don't know what you, you need to do forgiveness with to yourself or towards others, then your forgiveness is going to be topical. So how do you get to that appropriate layer? You identify, what am I needing? What am I feeling? I am feeling angry. I am feeling um, disrespected. I am feeling mm, unworthy. I am feeling uh, hurt. Uh, what else? List your emotions. What do you feel when somebody attacks you with anger? Okay, we're going to work both sides of this. One is when you're attacked with anger. The other is when you're in anger. I want to know when I'm in anger, I'm feeling this and I'm needing this. This is what I'm needing when I'm in anger towards somebody else. I want to know what's happening for you. Because once you can identify those, then you can do the soul and the doubt practice around these. Same thing when you're on the victim side of it. What am I feeling? What is it that I'm needing? Okay. When you identify those, very easy to apply the practices. We use the four powers. Body power, sound power. Sound power could be, I forgive you, you forgive me. Very simple uh, to apply to this practice. We use the, word, uh, the mind power, which is light and love coming to the area. And we use, of course, the soul power. Now, this is if we're dealing directly with an anger condition, whether it's coming at us or whether we're bringing it to another. That is um, putting out the fire in the moment, so to speak. Uh, after the fact, you can do practices for releasing the anger using just uh, focusing, for example, on the liver, chanting for the liver and the wood element. You could use love peace and harmony to release anger. And Nita, in your case, I would simply um, uh, use the song without even telling them what it is, you know, Love, Peace and Harmony, just burn it on uh, 50 different CDs, keep it in your office, and say, you know, uh, I have found this music to be very soothing. It helps people to release their, their, their hurt and their suffering, and it helps people to come to a place of love and peace and harmony. Uh, you know, those who use it, they go through a practice of recognizing that uh, they have felt this and they were needing this. And they ask the song to go to all the parties involved and to bring the necessary uh, healing and blessing to bring about love, peace and harmony and to release the anger, the resentment, the irritation, whatever it might be. Keep it in your, your nomenclature for your students or your clients, Nina. Um, but give them a tool that they can reach for when they're in their place of suffering. Give them a, 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 a way to do forgiveness and forgiveness practice um, when it is appropriate and when they're ready for it. Uh, of course, they have to be in the right state of mind for it, but you can work with them to a point where they are ready for that. Okay? Um, so it's a tough one because you can't teach them directly uh, spiritual karma, spiritual debt, the law of retribution, everything else kind of hard to do when they don't understand it, but you can work with it in a gentle way. Okay? So if we deal with this directly from the power of soul, what we would do is we would do the soul of the anger that I have experienced or am experiencing. I love you. You have the power to heal yourself. You have the power to release yourself. This is self-healing. So this is soul communication you would do a forgiveness practice. I forgive myself for allowing myself to get to the point of irritation. I forgive myself for allowing myself to, uh, to, to be um, upset by, uh, by what, what I've witnessed here because it triggered a need for respect. It triggered a need for validation. It triggered a need for um, this and this and that. You have to walk yourself through it, whatever it is, because it's a pretty wide swath. You can hear me giving like 10 different examples here. But one of the reasons why is there's so many different reasons it can come up for different people. And it shows up on both sides of the coin, in the receiving side and on the offering side. Okay? So let's go ahead and sit up straight to do a practice. Give me a second to tune in on which practice we want to use.
Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna chant uh, divine love. That'll be our mantra. Now, as we've learned earlier in the five elements, the liver has an association with the anger body. It does impact our emotions. It does impact our mind. So we're going to place our left palm over your liver, which is over your left rib cage, um, just underneath the left rib cage, near the bottom of the rib cage. Excuse me. Wrong side. It's on the right side of the body. I never said I was a medical major, okay? You know. Um, so on the right side is your liver. And place your right hand over there. And you can place your left palm over your lower abdomen. Close your eyes. If it's comfortable, bring your back away from the back of the chair to allow the energy to flow. And we're going to do a forgiveness practice first. So please repeat after me. Dear this soul, of all beings, if I or my ancestors have brought to you the condition of anger, if we have thought things that caused you to be angry, if we have spoken words that have caused you to be angry, if we have done actions that caused you to be angry. If we have done any of these in any way, including in relationships, in business, in family matters, including in emotional loving communications, in friendship communications, in workplace communications, if I have caused anger in this or any condition, I sincerely, sincerely apologize. I recognize that I may have created anger in others in many lifetimes because I have had the experience of anger in my lifetime. I have been angry when I know maybe I should not be and I have received other people's anger and not understood why. I understand now it is because of my spiritual debt. So I wish to deeply and sincerely apologize if I have brought harm or suffering to you in these ways. Please forgive me. Dear my own soul, I love you. I humbly ask that you guide me to catch myself becoming angry. Please bless me to have the consciousness to remove myself from the place I am in so that I can connect with my feelings and needs in that moment so that I can realize why I was becoming angry. Please bless me to choose a better form of communication that benefits everybody involved. Thank you. Dear the soul of divine love and the mantra, I forgive you, you forgive me. I love you. As I chant these mantras, could you please bless myself and all of these souls to forgive each other and release the anger. I am very grateful. Thank you. And so we have already invited in all of the beings of light, so they will be serving as well. So keep your eyes closed. Visualize great love and great forgiveness permeating you and all of the souls that have been invited. Let us begin. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. 
focused on the tremendous light coming in, coming into your whole body, into your liver, into the mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that permeate your body. Release the anger. Release the negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. Feel the Divine's love coming to you now. Divine love Divine love, divine love, divine love, <coughs> divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Dear all the souls, repeat silently, that I have harmed because of my ego responses, because I felt afraid abandoned because I may have felt a lack of respect. If I have responded from my ego, from a place of protection, a place of insecurity, I sincerely apologize. Please bless me with your divine love. Dear Divine Tao and Source, Please bless me to fulfill my own self-love so that I do not have the need to be power over another. So that I do not have the need to be superior just so I can not feel so small and unworthy. I am very, very grateful. Thank you. And let us do forgiveness. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you. You forgive me, bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me, bring love, peace, and harmony I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony I forgive 
you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. Now I want you to think of specific souls, one or two or three, those that you have the most blockage with. Maybe they are very angry at you all the time. Maybe you find yourself being too angry to them and you would like to ask for some blessings. Please invite those souls now to join you. Repeat after me. Dear these beautiful souls, I love you. I wish to ask for your forgiveness if in this or any lifetime I have been very angry to you. If I have treated with you, treated you disrespectfully, talked down to you, communicated to you with great and unpleasant anger. If I have belittled you, made you to feel less than in this or any lifetime, I most humbly and sincerely apologize. To those souls that I invited that have been angry to me, I understand and recognize now that it is possible that I have been this way to you in a different time and that I need to learn my lessons. I will do forgiveness practice, but I wish you to know that it is not okay that you are still and forever disrespectful to me. That if you continue to communicate to me with a lack of love and with great anger, that I will not stay in a position that allows me to be more and more harmed. As I do my forgiveness practice, as I ask for your forgiveness, and as I offer you forgiveness, there needs to be change in love. I am very grateful for this opportunity to ask for your forgiveness and to offer you my forgiveness. Let us continue to chant. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you. Forgive me, bring love, peace, and harmony. See the Divine's love and light surrounding you and these other souls. See forgiveness being offered back and forth between you, like light shooting between you, brightening you both up and releasing the blockages brightening everything between you, releasing the spiritual debt between your souls, releasing the spiritual debt in the soul of the relationship. Just a few more minutes. Divine love, divine love, divine love, Divine love, send your greatest love to all of these souls. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Divine love, 
Divine Love, Divine Love. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we thank the Divine, the Tao, the Source, all beings of light, planets, stars, galaxies, and universes for their service here today. We thank all of those souls that we have brought harm to in the form of anger for forgiving us. And we thank our own soul for its service in enlightening us on this most important matter. We ask for forgiveness from all those souls that we have brought harm to. And we wish for those souls that have harmed us to not take advantage of our unconditional forgiveness. We ask that you learn and not do the same mistakes again and again. We are very grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So for those that have just joined us in the last 10 or so minutes, we have been doing a uh, practice on releasing the condition of anger and on releasing of the associations with it, both for those that offer us anger and for the way we offer anger to others and the root causes. The nice part about soul power and Tao power is that we can identify the areas that we may have caused suffering to others. It's where we are. On, we are the victim. Wherever others are angry to us at, that's what we ask for forgiveness for. Okay? Wherever we are angry at others, we want to ask for forgiveness for what flared it up. Was it ego? Was it an attachment to something? Was it an expectation of something? Was it a specific mindset, attitude, or belief that we have adopted or accepted as a truth and those other people didn't know this, therefore we reacted negatively? We have to stop ourselves and back away from that irritation and look at it. What brought this up? What mindset do I have that causes us to flare? What attitude have I accepted as a truth that causes us to flare? What attachment do I have that if this attachment is not met, it, it validates me being angry? What ego response is showing up here that validates my anger? Okay? What need is not being met by this? Because that attachment, that mindset, that attitude, it, it's ego, of course, but it's because something wasn't being met. What need was not being met? And when you identify that need, you may have to drill down a little bit more. Well, I have a need to be respected. Why? That's not a need. That is, that's still ego. Because, because, because um, um, that's the way it is. Because that's what my dad taught me. He said, if you don't respect me, then I'll show you respect. And he would pull out the belt and he would slap me. Okay, so now you're at the root cause. You're at the, the need for respect because that's what you've been taught, but you have been taught incorrectly. Okay, so that's where you do your forgiveness. So this is how you unwind these kinds of ego reactions and ego responses. You have to stop and identify them if you are the one being, quote, the victimizer. I don't like that word, but in that moment, it's, it's, it's true because we need to be love, peace, and harmony. And we know that our buttons are pushed most by those closest to us. Why are they closest to us? Because they followed us from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. That's how spiritual debt and spiritual virtue works. So they're there so that we can resolve these kinds of blockages. We can't resolve them if we keep our blinders on and take no responsibility. We have to be aware. We have to be conscious. We have to take responsibility. And then we apply the Tao power, the soul power, and the power of forgiveness practices as this previous example gave you to release those. And we have to do it as many times as is necessary. And if it means that we need to get outside assistance to get to the core of that blockage, then do so. I am not a licensed psychologist. I think I took one psychology course. But I am very good at getting to the root causes because I use soul power. I connect with divine. Just get to the root cause. I had a... Um, uh, a friend called me earlier today and I was like doing three things at once and she's telling me about this problem and I'm, I'm only half listening to her and and she says I need you to help me and I said okay I don't know really what she's saying right now but I need to give her some assistance um, so then I share with her this is what I think you're saying right she says right okay there 
her soul, her heaven's team. Please tell me what she needs to do to solve this. And, and, you know, my mind is still somewhere else. So it's very easy for me to tune into the soul world. I just listened to what their response was, and I told her their response. And, and I said, how does that, you know, how does that resonate with you? And she said, oh, my God, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what I need to do to solve this problem. I said, great. I need to go back to my work now. So I don't need to know the psychological stuff that roots back to your childhood and all that stuff. It's, it's not relevant. The soul world can pretty much identify some of the root causes pretty fast. And once you have those, you can work through those. So if you need that kind of assistance, you know, contact me. I do soul readings. I do these kinds of things. Of course, there's an honor fee for it. But, you know, it can assist you through a lot of stuff pretty fast. So if that's of interest to you, let me know. I am looking for some of your sharing. I know I've been talking a lot uh, as to what this experience was like for you. Did you have any um, really good aha moments? Really good, um, wow, that's, this really will assist me a lot with you know, my, my parent, my, my children, whatever it might be. Go ahead and share those things right now. Okay, so I see that uh, Elaine says, Zilke says, need to watch this again. I missed almost half, yes. Uh, must be, um, uh, oh, you were in the twilight zone, huh, Zoki? She's, in the, she's late where she's at. Uh, Elaine says, like this on releasing anger. Thank you. You're very welcome, Susan. Uh, we'll be doing this over again, over and over and over. Good. I know I helped you with your friend. Good. CJ, wow, sweating uh, cold, saw divine mercy images. Very warm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. And Christine Lote, thank you for sharing this healing gift with us. It's been my pleasure. Um, Kristen Strachan just posted, I did have the experiencing with my cousin who was on here briefly of having to say, I will still offer blessings, but I can't be in contact with you anymore. I was sorry, but I could see that uh, it was not going to be productive for either of us to stay in contact. Thank you for your service, Master Paul. Yeah, um, one of the teachers I have a great respect for, Master Marilyn, we asked her this question once. We said, well, you know, you do forgiveness practice with others, you do your part, and, and they're still unpleasant people. What do you do then? And her response was very straightforward. You're not a doormat. She said, you're a human being that is working on your spiritual debt. If you do your part, and you invite their soul, you ask their soul to do their part, and their soul is not learning, and they are still not shifting, you remove yourself from that door. You no longer be that doormat. And this is just common sense, but I needed to hear it so that it, it can be applied in the spiritual world. Okay, It's important to recognize that kind of a common sense. Uh, Jules says, uh, wow, amazing, so much sense. I have a lot of anger from over the years. Um, and unfortunately, Jules, the system won't open up to let me see the rest of your comment. So I'm unable to see that, which is kind of frustrating. I'm learning to use the uh, system that's on <coughs> on uh, the computer. And Christine says, uh, as usual, your healing came at the right time. Thank you. You're very welcome, Christine. Zilke, I invited two souls, but one of them was present for the practice. I only saw her. Okay. My guess is they were both there, but... Um, uh, sometimes we're not able to see them. And Cassandra comments to Kristen, thank you for showing me this. Janet Mahori, very enlightening. I hold a lot of hurt from my eldest daughter. Yeah. Um, I suggest maybe you listen to it one more time for the newer people. There are layers of wisdom in this. Sometimes we can only capture the, the 10 or 15 percent, and then I'm on to, to something else, and we want to retain that, but we want to retain the newer information. So allow yourself to watch this again. You could get some great value out of it. Um, if you find yourself stuck and unable to move through those blockages, there is what's called special services that I've been uh, empowered to do that assist a lot. You can learn more at my website. It's listed above the video. Um, Elizabeth, many, many hearts. I think you have a heart fetish, Elizabeth. Silky says, I just came from the Tao Healing Center. That is one reason why my mind was so active. Aha, yeah. Okay, and so thank you all for sharing so very much. I do appreciate it. I think it's very important for your sharing. And um, if you belong to any groups that you think this could benefit, 
feel comfortable to share it to those groups, okay? Um, you just, you know, post it and say, for whoever this may benefit, please enjoy. If this is not for you, please do not spam or remove. It may serve somebody else. And a lot of people have mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs about something like this. It may not be something that jives with them and their, uh, their mindsets. And so if you do share to a group, just say very gently, you know, if, you, if this works with you, wonderful, please share. If this doesn't jive with you, please do not uh, keep other people from enjoying this experience by spamming it. This is a good thing to say whenever you share something that might be sketchy for some people. Okay? I say that because um, this hits on the word karma, it hits on the word past lives, and for some people that raises the hair on their head. All right? So I will be here tomorrow, same time, same place. I want to offer a, um, an invitation that uh, I'm going to be consistently doing lower, uh, excuse me, foundational energy practices. Now this is Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, an hour before this live stream. So this comes on uh, 2 p.m. Hawaii time, 4 p.m. Pacific time, um, 7 p.m. Eastern time, and so forth around the world. But uh, if you go to my page, you'll see my, my little advertisement that I put there. But do come to my foundational energy practices if you can make it one hour before this. I'm going to keep it at th roughly 45 minutes, try to keep it that or shorter. And I'll be focusing on one, maybe two energy centers for that period of time. This includes the lower Dantian, the Kundalini area, the message center, which is your heart center. I may focus on the third eye. I may focus on your intelligence center. I may focus on any one of the seven chakras, or what's called soul houses in the wisdom uh, that we work with. And so to have this kind of practice and training in a group structure is very, very valuable. There is no cost to this. This is my service to anybody who wants to join. It's by telephone, not by computer. Uh, 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 or, so you don't have to use any data, so to speak. So you can just call in. If you're out of the country, you can use Skype to call into that number, okay? And it might cost you one or two cents, but you know what? Uh, one hour, what is that? One hour, uh, 45 minutes, at two cents, three cents. You know, it might cost you a, a dollar to make that phone call, but um, you could get significant benefit from these practices because they will bring so many blessings to you in so many ways. So I encourage you to tune into that uh, information. I will post it if you want to come back here after I push stop. I will post that information. I'll put the, uh, the image and the links in here for you to access um, anytime you'd like. Okay? So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you to all beings of light that came to serve at this time and respectfully return to every soul that came. We'll see you tomorrow, same time. Bye-bye, everybody.